here is one with no sound. Cool action. Let's play this in full as always. And shwoom. And actually, the reason why I'm picking this one is because there's, there's an interesting thing where there are actually two versions submitted. You have this one that actually has, there's nothing with the bottle animation, but also no camera animation. It's cool to see the mechanics. Has a really nice clean view. All that is cool. And I actually prefer this one. I'm not sure that we need this. And there's something about a foot tap. It's almost like I'm impatient, I'm waiting for something. And then the bottle comes in, but then nothing happens. To me, it's almost like the feet would be pointing in the different ways that the character actually does not know this is here. The bottle suddenly starts moving, gets sucked into this as in, hey, something opened up, the bottle gets sucked in, maybe there's something happening. The foot turns with like a little sidestep and then the character goes, whoa, something just happened to appear in front of me. I don't know. This is a bit confusing to me in terms of what is the character waiting for? Because there's clearly this pose here, like, hmm, and then he does this? I don't know. Maybe he's thinking about something, whatever. But I'm not quite sure that we need that bottle as well. There's something in the combination of the foot tap and the bottle that doesn't quite work for me story-wise. It's neat here in terms of interaction, but then I would have more. I would have more stuff here, paper pieces where when this starts, that now the bottle gets, you know, starts to roll, gets sucked in, the paper goes up and gets sucked in. So you can use all that stuff here. Some of the boxes slowly get pulled towards that. Maybe not the car, but I don't know, why not? Because I mean, Spider-Man, you know, Miles is very strong here. So maybe that could be, that could be something where we can incorporate the set a bit more. Other than that, I think it's really cool. Again, that beginning, my little slight tweak here in terms of the posing, because now with that camera angle, we don't quite understand what's going on. I can see the fingers here on the chin. I think this could be a bit of a, a more readable pose. But once we get into this, that's cool. You get a bit of a drag in the head. You got that spine into this, that's cool. Maybe here I would push that leg into further out this way where it's a bit of a stronger uh, pull against it. I think we get into this a bit too soon. And then we linger in this pose for a bit long. And watch out when you have moments like these where it's basically one thigh and then there's two shins coming out there to the lower part of the legs. I think this could be a bit more broken up the way it is right there. A bit more dynamic, a bit sooner. But again, I will go... It could even be a moment of both legs out. It's a bit of a drag skitter into into that maybe but that's all cool i love that and then how we start to kind of move around with the camera and those changes are cool here again sometimes it's a bit maybe i will bring up that a bit higher and then this leg a bit lower it gets a bit too streamlining where this shin kind of grows out of that knee a bit more of a you know like stuff like that and i understand there's there's like a straight leg here but this could be straight leg and maybe a stronger pull back so that there's a separation between the, the two legs little picky things here and there and it's really not for long because after that it's cool i love all this here i love that you got the pull back with this into that with a slight overstretching and quiver in the knees into this i think that's really cool so to me it feels like starting here it's very successful you might even have a moment of as we get around with the camera and technically the camera gets closer to this you could have a little ramp up of of a camera shake adding to the intensity and, and to the you know the, the level of what's going to happen and then when this ends here camera shake stops and now it just you know goes away and then that's that so a little bit more pushing of the impact of the portal onto, you know, influencing the camera, influencing the set, set pieces. And that could be kind of cool, but generally it's really neat and dynamic. I just got some questions about that and that. Maybe I'm also missing something super obvious, but that's just my subjective take on this. And that is that. Picky thing here, probably moving that arm a bit further out. Just I'm ending on this frame, a bit of a tangent there. Kind of a bit too overlappy there, tangenty. It's not for super long. But you might as well go a bit lower right off the bat and keep this as clean as you can silhouette-wise there. Anyway, 
that's kind of that i'll leave it at that there's always some picky things you can find like here overlapping arms where you want to maybe keep it a bit longer in this area or a bent arm down just to keep that as clean and interesting as possible like this is cool i like that here it gets just a bit a bit muddy and this could be because of the previous version where they have a locked camera and me you know, maybe now with that moving camera there wasn't as much reworking of those poses maybe that camera turn came in afterwards i don't know so that's something for uh, this animator to maybe reply comment whatever let me know i don't know but there could be a cool interesting um, story behind the making of this but anyway i'll leave it at that thank you all right new clip here this one has no sound lots of crazy action ready <laughs> and lots of fun stuff in there all right this one i chose there's some really fun stuff here in the midsection where the holding on to things and i love how this stops there and you got that carryover of that upwards momentum into the drop hanging on to it and all the craziness here i think this is really fun big poses lots of stretchiness in the face in the fingers i love all that like lots of fun big action there what i will point out is that every now and then it's a bit too big in terms of especially here the amount of head actually stretching upwards as a lead and into that settle and especially the amount of squash and stretch in the head where it starts to feel a bit more like a water balloon than a stretch because of a, a fast move or a smear or just something where you want to just understand the the structure maybe the, the the line or where the character is going or just an emphasis like here and I think in those cases, it's fine to stretch and deform and scale the face. But when it's something where it's not that fast, I can see it. Again, it's one of those cases where I see it more than I feel it. And I feel like that could be just reduced a tad. I think that's all fun here. Into that. It could also be fun to have... I mean, this is a center of focus and it's, it's almost center. And you got a big glow. Could also be something where maybe this thing is rotating a little bit and right when she lands and she looks up and guides the audience this way we could have a couple of frames later a bit of a cling, like a slight highlight just give a little extra little something in there and then as we get to this one i think this is all fun it's every now and then a bit stiff in terms of she moves up and has that whoa that move upwards but then when she starts to drop back here, this is a bit of an extreme. I'm holding this pose where I feel like by that point, the body will be already lower. Just giving that, it feels like we're holding this a bit too long through there. This will kind of continue to go down physics wise. And this could be a really fun, long stretch into, a, you know, as she gets pulled up here, the legs drag into whoop, what she's doing here. It's a bit more extreme with the legs that will be probably up here and then fall back down into this for a little swing just every now and then it feels just a bit stiff or we're holding moments even through here a bit long with this leg and this pose feels like it's a it's a forced held moment and i i will keep this a bit more out of control and loose because she is at this point fairly out of, out of control and then once we get to this i love this here and there's something where there's a slight disconnect between the crazy action through this and how technically she will go in and out, in and out of the, the portal. And at the same time, she's kind of kind of quiet in that in that moment there. I think the way I would articulate is this: like I want to feel a residual, I, I want to feel an influence of the craziness here in her. And this could just be a high frequency shake in the body that kind of fades, fades out to the head. So a bit more shakiness here, a bit less, the little bit of a tremble there. But there's an overall shakiness, but more so here than at the tip and here, if that makes sense. Even she comes out here, again, it's all fun. We into this, but maybe with a bit more influence. And then careful with some of those lines here where it feels like that body is here and then pops down to the right. But then to the left and then suddenly down 
this way, then with the sudden move out here. And then you would feel like, well, now it would zip out, but then that hand is still kind of here. It feels like it's just a bit messy in its spacing. This one is a bit better. It has a bit of a drastic overall turn. You could have the body here, but then the head is a bit more here. A bit of a longer drag with a, maybe even a slight bend in the head this way and then going down. But again, the arm, it feels like, well, next frame would be here, but now suddenly that hand is up here. So again, watch out for that spacing issue there. Then we have, that's all fun with a little bit of a pop in the head again. There's something a bit poppy in the spacing through there. And we hold that moment a bit long through there. And this here, I will probably take a frame out or two out of that ending here. So it's a bit more of a... You have a nice zip through there, but then it's there's something a bit too long here. In terms of how long we linger here. We can exaggerate that a bit more. And then the timing of this. I mean, you might argue, well... This is all organic and this is the mechanical thing of just going and then down but then it has a bit of a bounce at the end where i feel like what if we would have maybe this stays here for a couple of frames like it like it comes out and it's kind of a meaning it builds through there a little bit then take a couple of frames out to make this a bit faster to land here a bit harsher and then we hold subjectively as always but that's kind of that for this still a lot of really fun work and uh, i'll leave it with that all right thank you all righty new clip here has sound as well it's very cool cool sound effects again a little sound a little air wind Yeah, lots of cool stuff. I'm gonna turn off that sound though, even though it's awesome. So I picked this one. There's a lot of cool stuff here in terms of the mechanics. I love, I love that little hold and float. And I like that it lands on the uneven surface for a slide into that exit. The things that I would point out, the couple of things here in terms of the moment you go up into the air and do all kinds of stuff while a camera move is indicated. So we can see here how there is a rotation potentially with the translate as well. Once you establish that, we go into this here and there is no geometry in terms of, you know, like some fake clouds, some extra towers, right? These guys could be maybe a bit higher. We start to lose the orientation in terms of, is this, is the movement of Link here, movement from the character or something that is also part of a camera move? So you can see here how the character goes up and it has a bit of a drop, but then it kind of holds again a bit and then drop again. I think it would help to just have extra markers just for orientation so you understand where he is and what's going on. Um, and if there's a difference between you know, a body move or a camera move there. The second thing is I will probably reduce that. It feels like that next stretch comes a bit early and I see it more than I feel it. That makes sense. There's just something that just feels a bit, whoa, we're turning into giraffe land here. And maybe in terms of silhouette, just bringing that arm over a bit faster, or looking at the in between, maybe a bit closer here and then a bit closer there so we don't cover the face. It also feels a bit broken just in terms of the complexity of all these shapes there. The other thing here is that a lot of it is straight to camera. It gets it's not too shabby here because again we got some okay silhouette again i will kind of watch out for stuff like that but again it's just one frame and it gets fairly clear here even though we'll probably bring out that arm to separate it from that leg so you can see the nice full structure of what's going on leg wise the arms out this way but it also moves fairly quickly in between here that's okay i like that we have the grab on the sword here but then we get into after a nice line here it gets a bit, anything to camera gets a bit funky when you have legs right there overlapping with the body. You kind of miss the structure, like what is going on right there. Again, we're covering the face. It turns into a bit of a ball, a rotation straight away from camera. Again, we're losing the, the shin, the feet, 
gets a bit wonky up until here. So this could be something where maybe that rotation continues stronger so that at this point we are more three quarters. So we get to see the bend in the legs a bit more, the, the bend, the rotation there and the spine into this because we don't really need to be that straight on. It could just be a bit more three quarters. So we're looking a bit more this way. That to me was kind of the, the biggest point there. It's like something like this here. We come in, but we continue. So you have a bit more of a, a nicer view there or even here in terms of the silhouette and things not moving to camera. A picky thing here, so watch that landing here. Boom. Is that head almost feels, it feels like that head is still overextended through there in terms of how low it gets and then how it moves. It's a bit swimmy and soft. Just that section through there. Versus, boom, look. It doesn't have to be super panicky in terms of head darts, but maybe just a bit sharper for a bit of a stronger focus. Because everything else is, has a really nice feel to it. And the last picky thing, if you look at the whole thing, I think that last hang time is a bit long. Do this. A bit sooner, maybe like five, six frames. Reducing the amount of time we're up here into this. And even here, it could potentially take a frame or two out for a bit of a faster zip out there. And that's kind of that. Still a cool shot. So there's always little things here and there. Subjective, of course. And that is that. Also a bit of a, is that a Super Mario pipe link in there? Anyway, that's that. Thank you. Alrighty, this one has sound as well. Let's play this in full first. Cool sound though, I like that. Ambient music and the sound are cool. I like that in terms of presentation, that's cool. And the reason why I'm picking this one is just because I'm always a big fan. I mean, you know, more, I love active cameras and dynamic stuff for sure. But I also like when it's something is presented like that, where it's a static camera, very clear view of the characters. It gives you room for a lot of, you know, big body action silhouettes. Not, definitely not gonna do some crazy lip sync on something that's that small. And it's also very video gamey. It's very cool. And I love the timing of it all. Where you have this, again, we'll frame by frame. It's, it's one that's, again, more where it's really cool and I don't have that much to say. So I love how, how long that hold is. You got a clean silhouette on this. And I move my head over a little bit so you can see the shooting over this way. So if you look at this here, the only thing I might say is that the shooting is almost a bit like once you shoot here, you would almost expect to go this way or this way, but it has a bit of a travel up to hit this. And then the whole thing, I don't know. I, I would say, I'm gonna bring my head up here. I will probably, since we have such a long hold, it could just be something where we get to this point and then shoot. So that arm is actually pointed. So let me switch this here, you know, exactly at that point and then your um, projectile, let's go back to this here, would, you know, hit all of this. And then maybe when you hit this, instead of going from here to here, it might just be even, not that it has to be like a drop thing, like a, you know, splash, but it could be something where we do have a sense of this now, maybe enveloping this, I don't know, like some extra effect there. That's extremely picky. But that would be for that moment there. But I do like, that time with a bit of extra longer hold for contrast it takes a bit longer than this section here clean silhouette again i think that's really cool nice change into into this there could be a slight stretch potentially Not sure if they want to go this far There's nothing else here is super exaggerated but you do have smears so this could be a moment of maybe introducing that a bit earlier here and to be extra picky again Again, because of the, the video gamey nature of this or like the feel of it, it makes sense how this character comes in. If it's just if it's something that's a bit more contrasty and, and mechanics and less replicating of a game, it might have been interesting to get maybe the character jump, not like a jump roll, but maybe a higher apex here into step, 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 or step, step into something else. And then that just something for contrast. So it doesn't feel like, well, there's a cycle. Until, until this section. 
And it could even just be something where the character is higher with the body and then gets lower over this time for a little height contrast that goes then and then leads into a squash anticipation for the stretch here. Again, picky stuff and understand that the feel is more of a video game. So it's not, it's not huge. Something here, the appearance could be cleaner in terms of coming out of that portal there instead of appearing in front, a little picky thing there. I do love that when the character gets to this point that it actually goes up this way, hold with a little bit of moving hold here on those legs and then into the back move. Here, I, I might go a bit further with the drag on those legs. Just give this an extra, because the legs are, are already going back. I'm gonna bring my head back down here. The legs are already going back, right? Here back, so might as well have something there. This is probably also a bit of a glitch. A bit late there. Let's play this in full here, let's see. Yeah, it kind of works though. Yeah, I take it back. Once you play it in real time, I buy it. But I would still experiment with going further back. It's kind of interesting though how delayed that multiple is there. That's all cool. Again, I like the, the hold up here. That's great too. I love the timing of up and choo -choo coming out there. Again, hang time is great with that little land hop forward, even just a little bit of leg adjustment. So it doesn't feel like landing and just sticking to this. It just gives you a good sense of weight. Also cool how character grabs that. Maybe that could be something where on the grabbing, there could be a bit of a glow or some sparks that would then stay put. And you could have fun with this where they kind of get sucked into this as well. So then they kind of fade off, but one or two coming through the portal. A little extra detail could be kind of fun. And I do love this. I do love how A disappears with this. It's not your, your classic round portal that you might have. I like that it's kind of off here. And then the expansion into, into this. And then going back. That's very cool. The only picky thing about this is that's cool in terms of readability. But once she gets to here, it's almost like this is a bit of a bummer where we get to there and it's the head kind of gets lost behind here and this here. I think this could be something where we could re maybe bring this up a bit higher, take this out, maybe put it here. I don't know, it's something where just we clean up this area for, so it's just this color here for super clean silhouette. That's the only thing, it's right at the end. And I want to read exactly what's going on. And I feel like, what did I just see? There's something going on there. A bit of a whole pivot around here, plus all of this. That's the only thing. Again, very, very picky, but I'm going to leave it at that. The rest is super cool. So again, more of a shot that I want to highlight in terms of how awesome it is. With little picky things here and there. All right, that's that. Thank you. All righty, there's sound here. Let's watch this in full first. It's so good. So I'm I'm picking this one. I don't really have much to say. I know I say this and then you know I ended up having a 10 minute critique about picky things. But actually in this one, I think the only thing I would say right now is that it would be interesting for this character, oh I should change colors here, to have a dart that focuses on this character a bit more. As in this is happening. But then it's kind of spaced out and even looking too high. Maybe this rig doesn't have eye controls like that. Or maybe you can just have a better focus here and then do it through head darts. That it would then focus down, focus back up, and then maybe a bit higher, and then a bit lower there as it gets closer. And that's that. It just, I feel like that could have been pushed a bit more. Other than that, I just want to pick this apart in terms of what's so awesome. Besides the sound, if you go back to it. I love this, how the landscape opens up. The audio scape there. And the little, the little squeaky sounds here. Let me bring up the volume a bit more. So good. And there's so many other things here. So you have a really good... I have to go cut that sound off here. Really good sense of pull and wait and I love how it then pops 
here and it still has enough energy and momentum to go up and then down for the plop here. Just watch those separate pieces. Some good timing there. If you'd be super picky, maybe they don't land at the same time. See, here I go. I'm going again, frame by framing to uh, picky things. That could be something. But then you got that with the blood splatter, which is this that brings this up. Now look at the blood splatter here. You have more blood coming out, forming two pools. Also different size for contrast. You might also argue here there's more blood here pumping out than in the lower limb section there, right? Which is already great little detail. It's a morbid, but still, it's really great. I love how we zoom out boom, on this so that we are kind of seeing the inside of this room, but we see the walls here, but then those pieces fall off the edge here. I know it's a little picky thing. I love it. I love the whole interaction and as this expands, how all those little pieces move. Just gets me all giddy about us animating all those little uh, extra pieces. It's great. The timing of it too is where you look at this, focuses here, goes off to these two. Also love how the head at one point, like this little guy, let's go, boom, boom, little extra little bounces. Same thing with this guy. This is at the same time. There's an offset, the drop here. I love how the feet, like the legs drop and then the feet go over and then plop down to the side. You also see how this character, if you go back here, let's go look at those two left and right. How they look at things, there's still some keep alive. And then, you know, immediate reaction to what's going on here. Same with this guy, let's go back here. Plops, looks up, and he has that little sway of, oh, with an extra little step that this character is not doing. So there's always a good little timing change and difference and contrast in all of this. And as this character comes in, also, you know, you have all these arrows going by and as it ends and we end up on the face as everything starts to rest, boom, timing, contrast with this character coming in. And I love the animation. I love how steps in and gets close to here and, le and leans over and down for the, head uh, for the handshake. I don't know. I just really love this animation. Great steps. And again, clear silhouette holding the staff there. I don't, it's so good. And also, I don't know what this guy is doing, but you see that arm stays there. Now, is the character looking at the hand, sniffing at the hand? There's just something where that arm stays up there, which is really funny. And I love that this character, let's go frame by frame here. Well, once this guy comes in, looks immediately, and then brings out those arms to go, oh, me, me, me. <laughs> that was a shake. And that's the only time we're going, ah, oh, it would be great to get a little bit of a focus change, either through eyes or, or head accent there some darts there but i love that little steps forward grabs this and then we go back into the rest i don't know this i really don't have much to say i just wanted to to use this and just to highlight what's awesome you know usually with critiques you go all right we'll change this and fix that and blah 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 frame 17 and sometimes it's also just cool to highlight like this is really cool and uh, this is cool and that is cool and uh yeah so that's where i'm at i just wanted to uh pick this this shot here and say it's awesome and uh, that's it from me. Alrighty, here's a new one that has also sound. Well, geez, I wish I had some ingredients. Oh, ingredients. <laughs> well, <laughs> those are great sounds. Oh, ingredients. All right, so the first thing, speaking of sound, I got a couple of notes in terms of some lip sync and body stuff. Um, but the first thing I want to say is I love how she doesn't react while all that stuff is hitting her face. Yes, there's a little bit of a body reaction in terms of impact, which I think is great, but there's nothing in the eyes and eyebrows, and I actually love that. <laughs> I don't, it makes me laugh. I would personally not change that. You would think that there might be some flinching or something, it's just, but to me, it gives, it gives just that extra weight. <laughs> this is so good. I love it. Now, that being said, sound-wise, here, <laughs> there's a bit of a... Ingredients! She already starts to to kind of hold back that laugh. Ingredients! Here, through ingredients. Ingredients! <laughs> and then you got that, that big <laughs> exhale laugh. So that's where I would tweak things where you might maybe not go... Not go as far in terms of the extremes of the mouth so that... Ingredients! So that 
yes, she can, you have room to grow to kind of push that expression and then <laughs> definitely bring in through the chest and then the jaw, just through the face, that, that little <laughs> exhale, that exhale laugh gets kind of lost in that animation. Well, I also like that we're cutting on action, like she's just finishing a move. Well, geez. I it's a nice pose too. I like that there's that lean geez. and then that switch. But I wish I had some ingredients. What I would do subjectively, I'm gonna turn off the sound here, is that I like that she leans this way, but she already has a bit of a lean that way. It's almost like you would flip this, where she does this, and then flip over this way. As in, instead of this like that, that she has the body like this, and that means that the whole beginning could just be, you know, mirrored in a way. And then she goes the other way so that there's a bigger contrast going from here to here. Like to me, it feels like this is almost underserved in terms of contrast where she goes, all right, well, let's do this. Ta -da! Surprise. And I think this could be really fun to have this the other way. Just a bigger contrast in your light of action body posing there. And then there could be something where it's bringing back the sound. What does she say here? Oh, in so after this, oh, ooh, ingredients. I will bring up those eyebrows a bit, a bit softer to get away from the bit of a stern look, and also start tweaking the eye, uh, the eye, the hand pose. Oh, and the finger pose. So she might be like this and go, ooh, a bit of a up, a bit of a little accent. Ooh, ingredients. So it's a bit more ooh. Like she's she's kind of almost making more fun of it and giving a bit of an you know, extra little head accent and importance to that moment. It's, <laughs> it's almost like she, by doing that, she cracks herself up. That's the only thing. It feels like once we're done with this, which cracks me up, Ooh. then we get a bit subdued. I love that she's got that change here to, ooh. Oh, ingredients. But I think we could have a little bit more of a flourish. And this could be, again, she could be maybe straighten up a little bit, a bit of a head accent flourish. The arm could go up with a slight little head you know, twinkle there in the fingers or just a little slight change. I think that could be, would be really cute as an accent because then you could go from this to a bit straighter <laughs> and then she would deflate into, into that laugh where everything can kind of come down and relax in the body. I think that would be a nice little progression and contrast in all of this. Other than that, Ooh, in picky things like this landing, Going over this, this feels more like a translate back left and right versus a bit of a roll in there. Could be a bit more complex with this. Oh, in green. Although that feels pretty good. Oh, in green. Has a bit of a sharp hit here. Boring how I change this direction there. Ingredients. Other than that, that feels pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. We'll pick things here and there as always. Other than that, I thought it was really funny. Love this. This just cracks me up how she stays put there. And uh, that's that. All right, thank you.